generous and kind with us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to gather in such a fashion in his house. Uh, to, uh, can you remove the effects? I think there's like, and just, uh, how about the effects? Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, that's better. Inshallah. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, we are blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allows us to, to gather together in, in safety and in wellness and in ease and in peace, which is something that we can't take for granted. Um, Allah, Sayyidina Ibrahim in the Quran, when he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اجعل هذا البلد آمنا ورزق أهله Ya Rabbi, make this land safe and secure and grant its ahl, its patrons from the fruits. And so we, we, are, we are able to take a piece of that safety and wellness. We're able to gather in a way that is seamless, alhamdulillah. So we, we can't, like even the most subtle things, of just being able to leave our homes, get in a car, walk into a space, sit down, relax in the house of Allah, do some dhikr and fikr until Salatul Maghrib. These aren't things that you should just assume these are givens or these are matters that are you know, easy. No, this is from the pure fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pure grace of Allah that he facilitates for us. So we have to really feel a sense of hamd and shukr uh, for this bi'ithnillah. Uh, Sister Samira wanted me to mention that for the children three and up, there is a program in the side rooms. So if you have children three and up, please you know, direct them to the side rooms to see Sister Samira. And then for the boys, um, during the fikr portion, they can play soccer outside. And then they'll join us for the, uh, for the dhikr, inshallah. So um, if for those who come late and don't know, you can just kind of whisper to them and tell them to send their children, inshallah. So today we have uh, the 103rd wisdom of Ibn Ata'illahi Sakandari Rahimahullah wa nafa'ana Allahu bi ulumihi fi al-daraini ameen haythu yaqul al-arifu la yazulu al-tiraruhu wa la yakunu ma'a ghayri allahi qararuhu Once again, al-arifu la yazulu al-tiraruhu wa la yakunu ma'a ghayri allahi qararuhu Ibn Ata'illah is saying that the, the Arif, the Gnostic, the knower of Allah, the true knower of Allah, his or her duress never departs them. Their duress, their sense of need or distress, right, this like almost agony, it never departs the Arif Billah, the true knower of Allah. Which, SubhanAllah, it's kind of almost jarring to hear that the Arif Billah, the knower of Allah, this duress never departs them. And the, the knower of Allah finds no rest in anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what does this mean? One of the poems, one of the poets, he brings a stanza of poetry that I think helps us to understand the subtlety of this idea of al-'arifu la yazulu tiraruhu that the knower, their duress never departs them. He says, "Kulli ilayka ma al-anfasi muhtaju, law kana fi mafraq al-iklil wa taju." He says that all of me, kulli ilayka, all of me is to you. Ma al-anfas muhtaj. In every breath I take, I am in dire need of you. Even if in my possession are al-iklil wa taj Al-iklil and taj are two different types of crowns. Two different types of crowns. The iklil is the, the crown that has flowers and greenery in it. And the taj is the one that's made of you know, pearls, diamonds, silver, etc. So he's saying, Kulli ilayka ma'al anfasi muhtaju. All of me, I am always in every breath in need of you, even if I, in my possession, is an iklil wa taj, which is a representative of all things. And so one of the ulama, when, when, when explaining this further, he says, Inna al-asbaba al-kawniya tadmahallu amam al-arif. That the worldly means, the worldly means, they wither away 
in the face of the knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They become meaningless in the face of Allah. So the knower of Allah, when engaging the day-to-day -day means of existence, our belongings, our money, our children, our relationships, all of these, they, they lose their value in the sight of the Arif Billah. إِلَّا أَن تَذُوبَ وَتَغِيبَ وَلَا يَبْقَى أَمَامَهُ وَفِي شُهُودِهِ إِلَّا الْمُسَبِّبِ الْوَاحِدِ الْفَعَالِ Until the means that are around us, our jobs, our 401ks, our relationships, all of this, you know, the, the degrees that we worked so hard to acquire, that we now rely upon. We feel, I, at the very least, alhamdulillah, I have an agree, a degree that's going to take care of me just in case, you know, worse comes to worse, I have this degree, I'm going to be okay. The, no, the true knower of Allah doesn't think that way. It becomes an anything of the worldly means withers away into nothingness. It has no inherent value except for المسبب الواحد الفعال The one doer, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is المسبب. He is the, the, the one who facilitates the means, creator of means. It is Allah. إِذَنْ فَرَخَاؤُهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Their comfort is from Allah. وَابْتِلَاءَاتُهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ And their hardships are from Allah. وَهُوَ فِي كِلَى الْحَالَتَيْنِ يَتَحَرَّقُ فِي قَبْلَةِ اللَّهِ And the knower of Allah, whether things are in rakha, in ease, or in hardship, they are moving in the qabda of Allah, in the constriction, in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the result of this is that the knower of Allah knows the following. That what we as human beings have found so much, whether they may be ease and comfort or hardship in these material means, they will never free us in front of the dominion of the divine. Meaning that I can feel so much comfort and confidence in things, places, belongings that I have put invested so much into, but it will never free me when I am in front of the dominion of the divine because he is the Sultan. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, he has absolute dominion, absolute control in, in a way that which no other thing even remotely has value. Well, uh, وَلَا تُشَكِّلْ أَيِّ فَاعْلِيَ مَعَ اللَّهِ And this knower of Allah realizes and knows with certainty that there is no worth or value or impact of these material things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know that my degree means nothing in terms of my welfare and my care. The money that I have, I can have millions of dollars in the bank which gives people peace of mind. I'm comfortable, I'm relaxed. You know, I have a... Uh, I have a, a, a trust fund. I have money that will, that will take care of me two lifetimes over. The knower of Allah never finds relief in those things. Never. Because they know that it's not something tarkanu ilayh. You don't rely upon those things. They're meaningless. So it literally, that's why huwa muttar billah. That's why he's saying, Ibn Atala is saying, al-arifu la yazulu tiraruhu. The knower of Allah never the, the, the rest never departs them because they never find comfort in these material things. Never. They always know by default that they are categorically in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing can be taken for granted. Nothing can be taken for granted. إِذَنْ فَهُوَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَلَّبُ فِي قَبْدَةِ اللَّهِ وَيَخْضَعُ لِسُلْطَانِ اللَّهِ this person is always vacillating in the constriction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِن ثَمَّ فَهُوَ لَا يَدْرِي مَا, ما الَّذِي سَيَأْتِي بَعْدْ بِهِ الْغَرْدِ The knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they're so immersed in the reality of the divine, they have no confidence or certainty of what will be. Us, for example, we have confidence that because I'm, I have X amount of money in the bank, and I'm going to buy a car that clearly the funds in my bank can cover, I have no doubt that I'm going to go buy this car. Actually, quite the contrary. What we'll do is like, well, I have a choice between this Honda or that Toyota or this Volkswagen or whatever, and those who are on the upper levels, BMWs and Mercedes and whatever. And then, you know, I have my choice because I have $100,000. 
I can comfortably, knowingly buy. The knower of Allah doesn't process reality that way. In any given second, they know that they are in a state of ittirar. They're in a state of duress, meaning they need Allah because nothing is a given. Do you understand? Nothing is a given. That right now I could be the healthiest, most physically capable person. All of my blood work looks perfect. All of my tests that I've done cardiologically or, or neurologically or whatever looks perfect. And that it could all go in a nanosecond. Doesn't matter how much the doctor has you know, given me re reassurance. I'm just here to reassure you that you're fine. You know, oh, you're young, you're good. Don't worry about that. That doesn't mean anything. To the knower of Allah, those are the words of an ignoramus. <laughs> Who are you to tell me not to worry? Who are you to tell me everything's going to be okay? You don't know anything. You don't know anything about the reality of existence. Only Allah does. And so subhanAllah, there's an ayah that we've read so many times, but if you think about it in this context, it gives you a new insight. Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse number 9, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the lisan al-habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدَعًا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Say, say, Ya Muhammad, I am not nothing new in terms of God's messengers. Okay? قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدَعًا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وَمَا أَدْرِي مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي وَلَا بِكُمْ And I do not know what will be done with me or you. What is the language of the Prophet ﷺ here indicating to us? He ha I have no idea. أَنَا بِاللَّهِ وَمَعَ اللَّهِ I'm my, by Allah and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is, you know, that, that state of uncertainty that is rooted in I don't know anything but what Allah may have in store for me. So when you operate without any givens or any expectations of what should be and what shouldn't be, then you are absolutely mutar. It's like the person, imagine you're drowning, you're drowning in the sea. And, and, and someone throws to you just one life raft, one lifeline, and you hold on to it. You're mutar. You have no choices. <laughs> you understand? You're an absolute, you have no choices. You're just holding on to the rope. You don't know if you're going to drown, not drown. You don't know if the wind is going to take you and throw you a hundred feet away. You don't know if the rope is going to fall apart. You don't know if something's going to happen to the helicopter fall. You don't know. It's ittirar. So you, can, you have no expectations. You're just holding on for dear life. Isn't that the, like the language we use? We're holding on for dear life. The Arif Billah, the knower of Allah, holds on to Allah for dear life in those terms. So there's no reliance or trust in anything. No confidence. You know, subhanAllah. You know, the constancy of states is impossible. Nothing, nothing is constant. Nothing. So for us to go to step further and say, well, by now, I'm supposed to have X in my life. I'm supposed to have, you know, a, a husband or a wife or children. Or I'm supposed to be settled financially. My son or my daughter is uh, 30s or their 40s and they're not married. They should be married by now. That's all non For the Arif of Billah, that's all nonsensical speech. There's no shoulds and supposed tos and must be. There's none of that exists. <laughs> So you see, subhanAllah, the, the, the beauty of this wisdom is that Al-Arifu Billah La Yazulu Ittiraruhu The knower of Allah, this duress never departs them. فَإِنْ أَتَّبِعُوا إِلَّا مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ وَمَا أَنَا إِلَّا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ Say, I am nothing new from the God's messengers. I do not know what will be done with me or you. I only follow what is revealed to me, I only warn plainly. That's what I, my duty is to sit here, follow the commands and guidance of Allah, and to warn, and to give, you know, to, to make aware to people what they should be aware of. To make plainly, uh, you know, aware to people what they should be following, what they should be staying away from, the, the path that they should be taking. This hikmah, it frees you from false expectations. And false reliances and false trusts, all of those falsities, it frees you of them. And your only duty is to get up and do what Allah wants you to do. Because if, let's take it from the perspective of being imprisoned or enslaved in the worldly realm. 
when you have a master above you, right, a, a, a mortal master, or you have a prison guard, and they're the ones who hold the keys of you using the bathroom, you eating, you having time in the sunlight, what are you going to do? How are you going to dispose yourself with that person? Are you going to sit there thinking, well, you know, I shouldn't really have to be going through this. You know, I should be free. I should be able to walk out whenever I want. I should be having my lunch whenever I want. I should, right? They would be, is a prisoner going to be thinking that way? Or is a prisoner going to be thinking, how do I ensure that I'm going to have my meal today? Let me make sure that I behave so that I get sunlight. I get time, you know, I get some day to go out and walk in the, uh, in the whatever. I, I just want to make sure that I behave. I do my bed. I clean my toilet. I, whatever it is. I stand, when I stand attention. When they open up the doors, I walk out just so that I make sure that I get what I need. That's a muttar. That muttar is only doing what? Obeying. The arif billah, no expectations, only obeys. And that's where freedom lies for the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's there. It's when you have no expectations of what should be and shouldn't be and you just obey. Because you know you are fully in need of what Allah has in store for you every second of your existence. The problem that happens to us is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Isra, verse number 67. He says, And when you get into distress at sea, those you pray to besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desert you. Weren't you worshipping all those other things? All the, and forget about idol worship. We worship so many things. People, places, things, belongings. Where are all those things now to save you? You're in the ocean, you're drowning. That, that person that you've been killing yourself over for the past 20 years, your sibling, your aunt, your uncle, your parent, your child, whatever, the, the, that one has, which has brought you so much agony. Okay, are they going to help you now? No. Subhanallah. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاكُمْ but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings you back safe to the land, you turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that person, everyone, Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, <laughs> when they're drowning or about to drown, God, help, no, please save me. I'll do anything. And then they're saved and what happens? Aratum. They turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kana insan kafura. And verily man is very ungrateful, rejecting the blessings of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَأَمِنْتُمْ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمْ جَانِبَ الْبَرْ أَوْ يُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ حَاصِبًا ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُوا لَكُمْ وَكِيلًا Can you be sure, and this is the whole idea of اتراب now, can you be sure that God will not have you swallowed up into the earth when you are back on land? So you were, you, you were in the sea, you were so nervous that you got back on land, now you feel like you're a king and you're comfortable, you're full of confidence. That's how, you know, those of us, for example, who have fear of flying, in the air, tasbih, dhikr, Qur'an, everything. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Rahim, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Amran, the whole Qur'an, completed ten times. You get back, you land, you start cursing and <laughs> go back on the nonsense, put the dhikr beads away. Is that not a reality? Is that not the case? You have an exam coming up. You're in hyper-focus mode of keeping it pure, Allah, because I need to pass. You know, you start going to Fajr a lot more somehow. Salah becomes a big function in your life. I have to do my, I'm sorry, I have to do my dhikr before this. Then after the exam is done, there's no more dhikr, no more Qur'an. So what's, you know, this superficial, short-sighted idea, oh, I'm unsafe here, but I'm safe over there. This idea that I'm safe, just get me over there, I'll be safe. Just put me over there, I'll be safe. Just give me this degree, I'll be safe. When people come up to me, the way, the agony in their eyes. Like, Sheikh, if I don't pass this test, you don't know what's going to happen to you. What's going to happen to you? You're going to discombobulate? Like, are you going to just like, just like, like Thanos? Just, shh. <laughs> like, what's going ha to happen to you if you fail the test? Nothing. The, that test is not going to help you or harm you in any way. That, that written exam that you go sit down and take and somehow, but we, we become so obsessed. So just as soon as the test is over and then we see that we've passed, relief, comfort, happiness, confidence. 
What delusion? Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Afa amintum an yakhsifa bikum janib al bar. Like you got saved from the ocean, you were so distressed there. Why do you think the earth can't swallow you up? Just like the water could, the ocean could swallow you up, the, 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 I can have the earth swallow you up. It's the same thing for me. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكُمْ وَكِيلًا Then you will find no one to protect you. أَمْ أَمِنْتُمْ أَنْ يُعِيدَكُمْ فِي تَارَةً أُخْرَى فَيُرْسِلَ عَلَيْكُمْ قَاصِفًا مِنَ الرِّيحِ فَيُغْرِقَكُمْ بِمَا كَفَرْتُمْ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا بِهِ تَبِيعًا Or can you be sure that he will not send you back out to sea? Okay, you're back. You're, 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 you're safe now, right? You're safe on land. How do you know that Allah is not going to send you back out to sea? He can send you right back out to sea. He can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can yo-yo you from one part to the air as he wills. Is that not the case? As he wills. At any point, your circumstances can be upended. So that whatever sense of false safety and security you have sitting there in your bed, oh, I'm so, the door is locked, I'm so safe, nothing can happen to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take your soul like, like, you know, just like a thread, just take it out. Subhanallah. That's what, do you understand why Ibn Atala is saying that for the knower of Allah, duress never departs them? Because it's just like, Ana billahi wa Allah all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, Yunus, verse number 12, And when trouble befalls man, he cries out to us. Whether, whether they are lying on their side, sitting or standing. You know, you're, at, you're in your bed, you feel unwell, you start crying out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're standing and you're worried about your child, you start crying out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all states. وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرُّ دَعَانَ لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُونَا إِلَى ضُرِّ مَسَّهُ But as soon as we relieve him of his trouble, he goes on his way as if he never cried out to us. All of us, all of us have experienced crying out to Allah, all of us. All of us have experienced moments when we're like, Ya Allah, please, I beg you. Is that not the case? You know the knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always that way. Of course, this is an elevated station. <laughs> because the, the knower of Allah does not get deluded. So you just have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, the knower of Allah always is in that, please Ya Allah, please Ya Allah. And if and, and so where, where do we fall? How many times in my life have you and I been that way? Five times? Ten times? Is that enough? No. Every day. Every moment. That's why when they describe the Prophet Sallam, inshallah, on Sunday we're going to be doing the Shama'il, so please join us with your families. The Prophet Sallam, when he was with the people, yeah, he was affable in his disposition, happy and comfortable. When he was alone, he was mutawasilul al-ahzan. It was very weighty. Shayabatni hud wa akhawatuha. Prophet says, What brought to my hair, not the only thing that brought grayness to my hair is Surah Hud and the sisters of Hud. Why? Because in Surah Hud are the verses that have to do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wajitna bika ala haula shahida, that we're going to bring you as a witness over these people. You have duties, responsibilities, work. Prophet, he never ever took his Islam for granted. He never even assumed for a second that his, his, his own Islam was a given. That's why in the famous dua, the Prophet ﷺ, this is what Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik would say, كَانَ يُكْثِرَ مِنْ قَوْلِ يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكِ Ya Allah, you are the one who alters the states of the heart. Make my heart steadfast upon your deen. Because the Prophet, his disposition was, not even is my Islam guaranteed for another minute. I don't know that. Could be just as Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ Islam, it could be taken. Why do you think? Why do you take your Islam for granted? Why do you assume that you're going to wake up Abdul Rahman tomorrow as a Muslim? Why do you assume that? The Prophet ﷺ not tell us about a time where people go to sleep as a uh, awake as a, a Muslim and go to sleep as a kafir. Islam is a gift. Man min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he gave it, he can take it. So the Prophet Sayyidina Anas, his khadim is saying, I would hear him saying all the time, Ya Allah, you are the one who alters the states of the heart, make my heart steadfast upon your deen. 
Is this not ittirar? Is this not duress? Yes, it is. Like if the Prophet ﷺ was relaxed and confident, why would he ask Allah to preserve his deen? So, subhanAllah, Anas, Sayyidina Anas, he said, Ya Rasulullah, amanna bik, we believed in you. Wa bima jita bihi, and what you have brought us. Fahal takhafu alayna? So Sayyidina Anas is saying that the Prophet ﷺ would always say abundantly, this dua, Ya Muqalib al-Qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. So Sayyidina Anas is saying, Ya Rasulullah, we believed in you and, we, and, and what you brought us. Do you fear for us? Are you worried that we're going to lose our religion? Like we believe in you and we follow what you have brought us. So the Prophet said, Naam, inna al-quloob bayna usba'in min asabi'i Allah yuqallibuha bayna masha. That the hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he alters them as he wishes. Yes, I am worried about you. No matter you, Anas ibn Malik, <laughs> Anas, Sayyiduna Anas, right? The great servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great rawi of hadith, I am worried about you, that you may not have your religion. Yes, I am worried about you. So if the Prophet is worried about Sayyidina Anas, what about us? Should we not be worried? Of course we should. By the way, the worry is not the anxiety-ridden disposition of paralysis, like I... You know, I get so fearful, so riddled with anxiety that I don't move or function. That's not what we're talking about. It's what we're talking about is the false comforts that we find in assuming things are givens or things are must-bes or should-bes. Like, for example, you have parents who come and say, I have been giving zakah my whole life, fasting my whole life, praying. I took my children to Islamic school. I did. I, and they'll mouth off to me 20 things they did. And then look at my son now. And? <laughs> what, what, what? Sayyidina Nuh, that's all you need to know, Sayyidina Nuh. Sayyidina Nuh, are you better than Sayyidina Nuh? I'm sure he sent his son to better Islamic schools than you did. That was a joke. <laughs> right? He did, I'm sure he educated him Islamically much better than we educate our children. And I'm certain we haven't even been the best educators or the best guys. We also just like to talk self-aggrandizing. I've done so much. And my child should be. No, why, why? First off, question and challenge the integrity of your claim. Maybe you haven't been such a great parent. Because Don't forget that when you see corruption and, and evil, it's because of what, you, what your hands have wrought. Don't ever point the finger out of Allah. Say, Ya Allah, I have done. Why is you're not fulfilling your part of the equation or the bargain? A'udhu Billah. What, 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 what an ingrate, how to, to think in such a, a vile way. But when the Prophet said, I'm saying, yes, the, the, the hearts of the believer are between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he alters the hearts as he says. He said, that's why, Ya Muqallib al qulub in Ramadan we always make this dua, we should make it outside of Ramadan. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik, thabbit qalbi ala ta'atik, thabbit qalbi ala salah. Ya Allah, make my heart steadfast upon your deen, upon your obedience. Upon those who read the Quran, you know, is, is it not the case that in Ramadan we have an uptick of taraweeh and ibadah and tahajjud and we're here all night and all day? And then post Ramadan, when's the last time you prayed tahajjud? Okay, just uh, put it out there. When's the last time you prayed qiyam? Did you say, Ya Allah, Allahumma thabbitni, Allahumma thabbitni? Did you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thabat? Because He's the one who gives it. Allahumma subhanahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thabat. One of the one of the, the ulama of Suluk, he says, "Saqani al-muhibba kasan baad kasan, fama nafid al-sharab wa la rawaitu." He says, the, the, "My beloved, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, saqani kasan baad kas." You know, he gave me a drink after a drink after a drink. He just kept on giving me. Fama nafid al-sharab, the drink did not cease, wa la rawaitu, and I have never been satiated. <laughs> You know, indicating what that it's always distress. Allah will always is the one who's giving absolutely, and his giving never ends, and we can never have enough. We can never be fulfilled. You understand that? You can sit there and you can say, All I want from Allah is that He gives me Shifa. What a short sighted duha. What do you mean all you want from Allah? Don't talk that way. People talk that way. Allah he just if if Allah can just get me married to this person, Wallahi, just that's all I'm asking for. Habibi, <laughs> you need 
everything all the time from Allah. Okay, you get married, but then you're not functional. You're, you, you get married, then you can't get out of bed. You get married, then you lose your job. You get married, then you, you, you're unhealthy. You get, and a thousand circumstances. We need Allah every night. That's why he said, that, that this Arif Billah said, that Allah's sharab, his drink never ends, and I will never be fulfilled or satiated because I'm always going to need Allah to pour that drink for me. And lastly, as we transition into the, to the dhikr, the second part where Ibn Atta'Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونُ مَعَ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ قَرَارُهُ And this Arif Billah finds no rest in anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this context, Shaykh al Buti he has a very beautiful explanation of this. He says, فَإِنَّهُ فِي حَيَاتِ الْعَارِفِينَ شَيْءٌ وَاحِدْ لَا ثَانِي لَهُ إِنَّهُ Allah Azza wa Jal that in the life of the knower of Allah, there's only one reality, and that is Allah Azza wa Jal. In qulta lahu, now pay attention to these beautiful questions. If you tell the knower of Allah, مَا الَّذِي تُرِيدُهُ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْحَيَا What do you want out of this life? His answer will be, أُرِيدُ مَا يُرِيدُهُ Allah. I want what Allah wants. The Arab Billah, that's how they answer. What do you want out of life? What do you want to be? That's why we want to teach our children a whole new set of language. Like words, vocabulary. Habibi, what do you want to be when you grow up? I just want to be a knower of Allah. I want what Allah wants from me. That's what I want. Stop this nonsense of programming them around careerism. It's a toxic, you know, modern consumerist capitalist idea. Uh, who are you going to be, Sheikh Ali? I'm going to... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not Allah. I'm not Allah. I want what Allah wants. I want to be whatever Allah wants me to be. And then they're asked, مَا الَّذِي يُنْعِشُكَ وَيُسْعِدُكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا What brings you intiash? What brings you kind of liveliness and brings you happiness from this dunya? The response of the arif will be, رِضَ Allah, The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only thing that gives me genuine pleasure. We've all, all of us, have been in the business of pursuing happiness and pleasure, right? How successful have you been? Yeah, laughter. Laughter across the board. We haven't been successful. You happy? No. You happy? No. You happy? No, barely. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm happy. 95% of the time I'm miserable. Are you not eating to your fill? Absolutely. Uh, do, you know how, do you have so many access to meat? Yes, you have You can come here, go there, eat. We have all of the options. It's not as if it's a material thing. You know full well it's not a material thing. But who's happy? No one's happy. The Arif Billah. What brings you liveliness? Yun'ishuka wa yus'iduka? Rid Allah, that Allah is happy and Allah is pleased. That's what brings me happiness. SubhanAllah. That's beauty. That's pure beauty. And if you realize that and understand the beauty of just finding that your pursuits, that's why I said this you know, months back here in one of the, the forums. I said there's only one question. There's only one question that you and I should agonize over every single day. And that is, is Allah pleased with me? That's the only thing that matters. And that will result in endless felicity and liveliness. That will, that will give you a real life. You don't, you know, the monotone kind of um, muted existence that we have, where we're just barely functional, you know that barely functional state? Barely going to work, barely going to school, barely getting home, barely tolerating your spouse, barely tolerating the home. You know that barely functional state? That's because there's no intiash, there's no liveliness. I, I always like to say, you know, you can actually live on this earth. You don't just have to exist because most of us just exist here. Like barely begrudgingly existing. You can actually live a lively life with these wisdoms of Ibn Atta'Allah second. Then he says, وَإِن قُلْتَ لَهُ مَنْ نَعِيمَ الَّذِي تَطْمَحُ إِلَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ what is the, the, the pleasure, the na'im, the bounty, the beauty that you are so desirous of in the afterlife? The knower of Allah will respond, Ru'yatullah. I just want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laddatul nazari ila wajhi kareem. The sweetness of the beatific vision. To see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن قُلْتَ لَهُ مَا الَّذِي يُخِيفُكَ مِنْ هَذَا الْكَوْنِ كُلِّهِ And what makes you fearful in all of this creation? أَجَابَكَ سَخَطَ Allah, The wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The anger of Allah. For the majority of us, if we're going to be honest, the things that we fear is losing our money, losing our children, losing belongings, losing things. That's what we are fearful of. We're 
so woefully, dreadfully fearful of material things. But are we fearful of the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much of a motivator is that in my life? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِن قُلْتَ لَهُ مَنْ هُوَ مَحْبُوبَكَ الَّذِي يَمْلَكُ عَلَيْكَ قَلْبَكَ And what, who is your beloved mahbubak that completely controls and possesses your heart? The knower of Allah says, mahbubi, Allah. My beloved, the one who possesses my heart is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not your child, not your parent, not your spouse, none of that stuff. None of them. None of these people are your mahboob. Mahboobak Allah wa Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَذَلِكَ Ibn Ata, the Shaykh Sayyid is saying, فَذَلِكَ هُوَ مَعْنَ الْقَرَارِ This is the meaning of qarar, of being at peace and serenity and, and security. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gift us the beauty of these wisdoms. Allah, as I've said many times, these wisdoms of Ibn Ata, they are, it's a beautiful, beautiful, piece of art, work of art, with so many shades and colors of explaining to us the subtleties of what it looks like to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, a functional, practical relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gift us the gift of fikr, and the tafakkar, that we think and contemplate the reality of the divine. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallillahumma wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillahi wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we're going to transition into our, our main course. <laughs> so inshallah, um, Zayd, Fahmi, and the rest of the boys, come here, all of you. And the young girls can come as well. Zayd, bring all the boys here. We'll call the boys. We'll call the boys, quick. That's what can. Because inshallah, we'll do our dhikr portion. And then uh, Salat al-Maghrib, and we're just going to delay it just 10 minutes, inshaAllah. Bismillah. <laughs> وَلَيْتَكَ تَرْضَى Thank 
kun ma Allahi tara Allaha ma'an wa turuki al kull wa ha dir ta ma'an la ilaha illa Allah 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 Wassalamu ala maulai Rasulillah Thumma da'a nafsaka bidhulli lahu Qabla anna nafsaka ran tada'ak Kullama nabaka amrun thiqbi Wahtariz li al-ghayri tashku waja'ak Kun ma'allahi tara allaha ma'ak وَتَرُكِ الْكُلَّ وَحَذِرْ طَمَعَكْ وَدَعِ التَّدْبِيرَ فِي الْأَمْرِ لَهُ وَاصْنَعِ الْمَعْرُوفَ مَا مَنْ صَنَعَكْ وَاصْنَعِ الْمَعْرُوفَ مَا مَنْ صَنَعَكْ لَا تَقُلْ لَمْ يَفْتَحِ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَطْلُبِ الْفَتْحَ وَحَرِّرْ وَرَعَكْ تَطْلُبِ الفتح وحرر وراك لا إله إلا الله 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 والصلاة على رسول الله إنما يسقيك من قاد زراك فز بوصل إن تراه وصلا واقبل القطع إذا ما قطعك واقبل القطع إذا ما قطعك مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا أبيبك خير الخلق كل إيمي مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كلهم محمد أشرف الأعراب والعجم محمد خير من يمشي على قدم مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد بسيط المعروف جميعه محمد 
صاحب الإحسان والكرام محمد تاج رسل الله قاطبة محمد صادق الأقوال والكلم مولا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله محمد رويت بالنور طينته محمد لم يزل نورا من القدام محمد حكيم بالعدل ذو شرف محمد مدين الإنعام والحكم مولا يصل وسلم أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم محمد سيد طابت مناقبه محمد صغى الرحمن بالنعام محمد صفوة الباري وخيرته محمد طاهر من سائر تهام محمد ضحي كل ضيف مكرمه محمد جاره والله لم يضام مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كل محمد طابت الدنيا ببعثته محمد طابت الدنيا ببعثته محمد جاء بالآيات والحكام محمد يوم بعث الناس شافعون محمد نور الهادي من الظلام محمد قائم لله ذو همام محمد قائم لله ذو همام محمد خاتم للرسل كون لهم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك بك خير الخلق كله مي ما شاء الله حسنا تفضل سيدي تكبير تكبير ما شاء الله this is والله سبحان الله this is from the نعيم of the دنيا from the pleasures of the دنيا is to be in ذكر collectively as a community as families to send the most beautiful of oaths to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and to have our children fully involved and invested and happy. Muhammad Ali, I, I didn't hear your... Uh, Muhammad Ali, where, where is your voice today? Usually you're, you're rocking the roof. You turn, you turn his volume down? <laughs> no, don't, don't ever turn Muhammad Ali's volume down again. Barakallahu <laughs> feekum. So inshallah, um, we're going to transition into our weird of istighfar la ilaha illallah and muhammad salawat upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is the weird this is the litany that all of us should be making all the time wallahi we are just here together doing this as inspiration to give you a flavor to get your muscles acquainted with making dhikr and then inshallah you should be making this dhikr every single day 100 times salawat 100 times istighfar seeking allah's forgiveness 100 times saying La ilaha illallah, 100 times sending salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Brother Mir had asked me last week, what should you be thinking when making dhikr? While you're making istighfar, while you're making istighfar, 
All of us have scores of shortcomings, weaknesses, deficiencies that we've committed over the past week, over the past period. When you're making is your istighfar, it's as if you're bringing each file to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're saying, Ya Allah, delete. Ya Allah, delete. You know, you're, you're liquidating all of the stuff. You're just giving them to Allah. Ya Allah, delete, 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 delete. And purify, 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 inshaAllah. So together, bi idhnillahi ta'ala, 100 times. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. 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 Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh 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 Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayya al-Qayyum wa atubu ilayh Ya Allah, Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana Ya Allah, we beg you to forgive our sins and our shortcomings to cleanse us of all of our impurities to cleanse us of all of our forgetfulness, all of our heedlessness all of the times, Ya Allah, that we've relied upon anything or anyone but you, Ya Allah any time, any moment that we have put our trust in anything but you, Ya Allah, we ask you to forgive us and cleanse us and purify us and be pleased with us. Allahumma ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we come together, Ya Allah, as a community to glorify you and to praise you and to affirm categorically that there is no God worthy of worship but you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, 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 
له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير يا الله يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم we come to you collectively ya Allah in full surrender in full submission in full belief in la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah ya Allah we come to affirm and reaffirm this reality and this truth as being the only truth ya Allah we renew our pact with you this pact of la ilaha illallah we come to you on this night of Jumu'ah to renew this pact as children, as parents, as family members, as husbands, as wives, as community members. We come to renew our ahd, our pact with you, and that is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And Ya Allah, you are the one who has willed that our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is our guide and he is our messenger. 
and he is the light that we follow to you, Ya Allah. You are the one who told us to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You said in the Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun, yusallun ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 Sallallahu ala Muhammad 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad Allahumma salli wa sallim wa an'im wa akrim wa barik ala habibina wa shafi'ina wa qurrati uyunina sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad fi al-awwalin wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad fi al-akhirin وصل وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه يا الله we ask you to gift us the blessings of these salawat to gift us the healing of these salawat the light of these salawat the sufficement of these salawat the forgiveness of these salawat the shafa'ah, the intercession of these salawat. Ya Allah, gift us the rewards of these salawat. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-maqam al-mahmood al-ladhi wa'attah. Grant him the elevated praiseworthy station that you have promised him, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you are the one who said that if we, when we make one salah upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you make ten upon us. We ask you to grant us this reward of salawat, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring light and healing into our homes and into our hearts through these salawat and through this dhikr and to make us a community of dhikr and families of dhikr and homes full of dhikr. Ya Allah, allow us to be a part of a cause of a revolution of dhikr. Ya Allah, all of us, the Muslims and the non-Muslims need dhikr. Ya Allah, allow us to be a bright shining light of dhikr. Ya Allah, we know there is a crisis of dhikr. We do not remember you sufficiently. We ask you, Ya Allah, to make us min al dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat. Ya Allah, we, allow, we beg you that you allow us to be inspired to bring this dhikr into our homes, to gather as husbands and wives and as children, as families, even, even if we're alone, to gather with our loved ones and make dhikr every single day of our lives. Ya Allah, we never want it to be that one day or one moment passes without making dhikr. Allow us to be always dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim standing and sitting and on our sides Allahumma ameen Ya Allah we ask you to bless us bless this community bless these families bless these qulub bless these hearts bless our ummah bless everyone who's here who's watching and who's beyond we ask you to bring beauty and blessings to all of us Ya Allah and we ask you to use us for your deen to, to use us to be a prophetic agent in this world Agents of prophecy, people who care about what is pleasing to you, Ya Allah. Make us a community that is caring about what's pleasing to you. And make us a community that follows beautifully in the footsteps of Sayyiduna Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. Inshallah, before we stand for Salat al Maghrib, I think Hassan uh, has a brief announcement. And then we have also an announcement from uh, the 114 uh, brothers and sisters. So I think either we'll do that before Salah or maybe Daniel after Salah, Inshallah. After Salah, okay. So we'll, 114 and we'll have an announcement after Salah, but before Salah, quickly, Hassan. Rahim. Rahim. So, two brief announcements for you guys. Um, I just wanted to encourage all of you to please join us on this Sunday, on August 20th. Um, Sheikh's always talking about and teaching us about knowing our Prophet, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're going to have an entire day intensive from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in Tinek of learning the Shabbat. So, inshallah, I hope you can all join us. There is a poster here with a QR code on it. 
uh, where you can kind of register for the class, or you can go to our social media, Pathetic Living, for um, as well. and you can sign up. Families as well, family it's, children. It's a family program. We're going to be in AUCC, which has like a beautiful children's facility. So there's going to be a simultaneous children's program. So there'll be a program for the kids, and then also inshallah for the adults. Second announcement, um, I want to encourage all of you to go to propheticliving.org and connect with us and sign up for our newsletter. Tomorrow, um, we will be um, uh, announcing our registration link for our Umrah, which is going to be this December. We would love to have you all join us, um, Sheikh Yasser and us, for Umrah in December. So connect with us and you get that email and you'll have the opportunity to sign up. Since our limited, we're taking 80 people. So inshallah, please make sure you connect with us. Uh, thank you all for being here. Barakallah. Thank you. 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 Thank you